Welcome back to Simple Truth. Very placid, calm, simple truth. Only we're not really that way. Uh, we are in the middle of a battle. We're in the middle of a battle of David and Goliath. We're in the middle of the battle that God is fighting against the enemy. And he's just moving pawns around. You see, the enemy had his... Uh, Let's see, which one piece do we want to use? Let's make Goliath uh, the enemy's rook, right? The enemy pulls out one of his top guns, right? One of his pieces that has the ability to do all kinds of things, right? He isn't going to just send Goliath anywhere. He sends Goliath in big moments to do big things. When I play chess, I use my rook sparingly. It sits in the corner until I need it to move at the very end, right? God pulls out his piece. Uh, do you know, here's the deal. In God's chessboard, there's a lot more pawns than there are anything else. So God brings out his piece and he moves David. David to right in front of Goliath, right? Right in front of Goliath. And that's God's answer to this whole thing. And so far, nobody has been impressed with God's movement. Nobody's impressed with God's piece that he's choosing to use. His dad wasn't super impressed, right? Even Samuel, when he anointed him, wasn't super impressed with David, right? His brothers aren't super impressed with him, right? And now Saul, the king, is like, yeah, you can't do this, right? Nobody, nobody's buying David except for God. Maybe, maybe today you feel that exact same way. Maybe nobody's buying you except God. God. Maybe God has given you a vision, a dream, said something to you, and, and you're like, yep, I want to do it. And you're trying to convince people that you can do it. And they're all looking at you and they're laughing. They're all looking at you and telling you why you can't do it. Listen, I've heard this for years and years as I'm going to uh, bemoan again for years and years with my wanting to own a castle, right? Everybody has said, can't do it, 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 can't do it. I think God, God said yes, right? If you come down to the epicenter right now, you would think that you're walking into a castle, right? God has given me a castle, right? Again, did it take on the, the form, the shape that I wanted? Does it have a moat? Does it have a drawbridge? Not yet. Not yet is the answer to that. But when you walk in here, does it look like a castle? Yeah. Yep. There's parts of it that look castle-ish. My good friend, Mark Hansen, he's uh, a little nervous about the whole thing, right? That doesn't really know. said when we get a dungeon, when we get the, the stocks, the things like that, he, he may not be able to uh, be down here as much, right? We're, we're working on it. But listen, when people tell you no all the time, you start to actually believe them. You start thinking that God didn't tell you this, right? Again, the enemy will use good-natured people to say stupid things. If God didn't tell you to say something to somebody, why are you doing it? Why, why are you doing it? We, we live down here at the, at the center and what we do. We have a lot of different moving parts, a lot of different people. Frequently, people are sending me encouragement. They're sending me praying for you. They're sending me devotional thoughts. They're sending us all kinds of stuff. Here's the truth. If God didn't tell you to send me a devotional thought, don't, don't send it. Because again, what you might want for good and what might be truth and what might be good, the enemy might use in a totally different way. I might be in a mindset that goes, why, why are you sending that to me? What did I do wrong? How come? It might beat me up rather than lift me up, right? But when God sends you, when he moves his pawn, when he moves his piece and he says, hey, uh, this is the piece I'm using today. It's for a purpose, for a reason, right? for a purpose and a reason. So God's moving his pieces around to counteract that which the enemy is doing. And the enemy's pieces, they look scarier and they're way louder and they have bad breath and they have huge swords and they got all kinds of things that stop you from wanting to do what God has told you to do. But you and I have to know that God has positioned us for such a time as this. Let me combine stories for a second. Esther ran into that same thing. When she was confronted by her uncle, asked to go do something really crazy, right? When she was asked to do something really crazy, go in front of the king and beg for your people, basically. She said, listen, you know as well as I do, you can't just go in front of the king. If you go in front of the king and he doesn't, doesn't extend the golden scepter to you, you're going to die. You're going to die. 
and he hasn't called me for 30 days. I don't even know if he still likes me. He might have a have a better choice, right? He, all kinds of things could be going through our mind, right? And and Mordecai says that, which is super important. Hey, uh, you you don't know that you weren't born for this exact moment, for such a time as this. Now, this is the whole reason you're on this planet, right? Whole reason that you're on this planet is for such a time as this. When God moves you and he tells you to move and he says pawn from A4 to B4, whatever it is, right? You don't know that that's not for a big purpose for such a time as this. So ours isn't to be arguing and don't listen to all the voices around. If God moves you, you move. Here's the deal. Here's what David says in verse 34. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep flock for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and he took a lamb from the flock, I went after him, I struck him and I delivered it out of his mouth. And if he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Listen, here's the truth. This little pawn that you're looking at, I've killed lions and bears, right? If he had, I had lions and tigers and bears, oh my, we'd all know the reference, right? We'd be like, oh, he's talking about the Wizard of Oz, right? He faced the wicked witch, David, and he's beaten the wicked witch. He's faced the giants before. Like, not only, not only did he attack them when, when they had one of his sheep out, in, you know, in their mouth, it says he then went after them. Right? Like he said, like, no, no, it's not enough that I'm just going to defend my sheep. I'm going to go after so you don't get any more. So you don't go after them anymore. So you don't want... There's such great truth in that. I wish I could stop right here and really just preach for about three hours. And I wish I could then apply it to my own life. Right? We get so caught up in playing defense all the time. I want to I wanna read that again. It says, right? It says, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. When there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him, struck him, and delivered it out of his mouth. That's the defensive part, right? That's just what we all do. Listen, you attack my, my church people, and I'm coming in after you, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them. I'm going to defend them. I'm going to save them, right? So we save them. But notice the second part of that. And if he arose against me then i caught him by his beard struck him and killed him like if, if he just let the sheep go and just disappeared and slunked away no problem he can live to fight another day but if he was dumb enough to attack i'm gonna i'm going after him i'm coming after him when do we go after the enemy i've said this down here for a year now when do we go after the enemy and plunder his camp why are we just defensive and let him slink off right so he can fight another day Sometimes we have to go after him and kill him, right? Sometimes we have to go after him and take him out. David recognizes it. He sees this, right? He's not talking about going to, to Goliath and saying, oh, Goliath, could you, just, could you just go home for the day and you know, go away and leave these people alone? And he knows this is a moment where he's going to have to go after the lion because he's rising up against God. Right? Do you get mad when people arise against your God? When the enemy is arising up, when he's moving his pieces and he's destroying the chessboard, do you get do you get mad or you just slink away and hide it underneath you know the queen's skirt on the chessboard? What what do you do? David says no, nope. You know what? When a lion or a bear came after me, I attacked them. Goliath's coming after us, right? He's attacking our God. So again, here's my simple truth for you. There are times, right? When we just, we just know that God has placed us in a spot. But he's not just asking us to be defensive in nature. He's actually using us to be offensive in nature. God's about ready to do something in this moment that's going to tip the scales, change, change things. Change the atmosphere. Change the landscape. Change things. He's going to use this little tiny pawn called David. And what he's been doing, what we find out is... David's been prepared and prepared and prepared for this. And that which he did in secret, that which he did, right, in being faithful with the little, those few flock, those few sheep that his brothers accused him of, right, that which he had been faithful with, now he's going to do it in a bigger stage. Sometimes God says, hey, I need you to be faithful in a bigger stage. I need you to do this in a bigger way. Just do exactly what you're used to doing. 
know me, ask me, seek me, believe in me, have faith in me, trust me, and I'm going to take care of this for you. I'm not asking you to do it a different way. I'm just asking you to transfer from this giant to the next giant. Some people are really good at fixing things. They go from store to store. They go from business to business. They go from home to home. They just fix things. They don't change what they do. They change where they do it. Maybe that's what God's asking. Maybe you've been faithful at home, been faithful at your workplace, and God's saying, can we just do this on a bigger scale? I want to use you on a bigger scale, right? To free people from the, from the mouths of lions and tigers and bears. It's time for the wicked witch to be melted. Dorothy, Dorothy just reacted, and the wicked witch went away with some water, right? God looks at it and says, listen, I just need you to be in the right place at the right time so that I can use you. I can use you to take care of the problem. That's all David's doing here. He went out because his dad told him to go out. But what we find out is that actually God ordained this whole thing, did this whole thing. So, hey, we're going to get closer to finishing up and getting to the part where everybody knows. This is a part that most people don't even know about. Um, but we're getting there. We'll see you next time. Simple truth.